beta blockers like atenolol block potassium channels in both autorhythmic and cardiac muscle cells. How's it look? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So over here we'll do autorhythmic first. And then we'll do cardiac muscle over here. I guess I would like you to be able to answer this question in the style that works best for you. So if you like to draw pictures, you can draw a picture answer. You can also write it out if you just like, I would like to use words. I'll be honest with you, if you use all picture or all words, you usually end up missing something. And so you kind of want to do a little bit of both. But I'll try and... I shouldn't put this on YouTube. Autorhythmic is one of those words where you have to write it really fast. Otherwise you don't get it right. So the way I would answer this question is I would say I'm going to draw an action potential. Am I getting, am I getting too far over? No. Yeah, still. You still have four in there. Okay. So I would say normally an autorhythmic cell looks like this. And since we're blocking a potassium channel, this is not going to be changed because that's sodium leak. This is not going to be changed because that's a calcium channel. We're affecting the potassium channel. But if we block the potassium channel, this potassium will not be able to leave as quickly. So the voltage will not go back down as fast. So sodium will take longer to get out of the cell. So the overall result is you're going to decrease heart rate, which will decrease cardiac outputs. Now we haven't talked about cardiac output yet, but we're going to draw that graph up. And I would like all of your cardiac drugs to end on how does it affect cardiac output. So really the last two words in every, every one of your drug answers should be cardiac output. I think that if you draw it pretty much like that, and I guess I'm just going to have to make the assumption that you understand enough about the action potential, that you're showing me that you know it's not affecting sodium, it's not affecting calcium, it's only affecting potassium. Now that's not to say that you can write something like this. And that that shows me that you know what's going on. So that would not be worth credit because you're not showing me the specific shape of the autorhythmic action potential and the specific effect of the beta blocker on, so on potassium. Now you may say, I don't really like to draw these things. I would like to write it. And so what you would say is a tenolol blocks potassium channels in AR cells. Blocking potassium slows repolarization. And these are terms you probably heard in AP1 when you talked about action potentials in neurons. But this is called depolarization. Whereas this is called repolarization. And because
because this is happening slower, we're slowing repolarization. Slowing repol stretches the action potential, and you can use the abbreviation AP out and slows heart rate. Slowed heart rate equals a decrease in cardiac output. You'll see that it's a little bit more complex than that, but we can simp we can keep it that simple. That if you decrease heart rate, you're going to decrease cardiac output. Now it's a little more challenging over here because, in all honesty, this would be the action potential in normal. And this would be the action potential in beta blocker. They'll look the same. But underneath, in normal, we will have lots of calcium entering <coughs> and lots of potassium leaving. But in the case of beta blocker, I'll draw it down here. Beta blockers block potassium channels in the cardiac muscle. So what's going to happen here <coughs> is potassium cannot leave as well. You have block channels that are letting potassium out. And since potassium and calcium are linked, that means less calcium in. So here what I'm trying to draw is lots of potassium leaving, and since that's linked to calcium, a lot of calcium can come in. In beta blocker, you block the potassium channel, which I'm trying to just draw as a smaller arrow, not as much potassium can leave, which means not as much calcium can come in. And since that calcium is causing muscle contraction, this will decrease contractility. which will decrease cardiac output. Again, if you wanted to use words instead of pictures, you would say something like beta blockers block potassium channels in cardiac muscle. Since Calcium and calcium are linked. And I don't mean physically, they're just linked by charge. If one charge is going the other way, the other charge will want to go in the opposite, opposite direction. Inhibiting potassium will inhibit calcium. Let's say inhibiting potassium exit just to be more specific, will inhibit calcium entry. And to be honest, some websites that you go to will say beta blockers actually block calcium channels because it's really hard to know if it's blocking the potassium or the calcium. The reason I go with potassium is because adrenaline stimulates K channels. Beta blockers block adrenaline. That's, a, that's essentially the effect of a beta blocker, is it blocks the stimulation by adrenaline. So since adrenaline stimulates potassium channels, beta blockers block potassium channels. Not directly, but they just block the adrenaline stimulation. Less calcium entry equals less muscle contraction. There's kind of a big step in there, but less calcium to bind to a troponin, move tropomyosin out of the way so actin and myosin can interact. Less contraction equals decreased cardiac output. 
I'm always all right with arrows, just to shorten, the, shorten up what you're saying. Now, the last thing I want to say about this is I think if you're a visual person, you can just write this. As long as you have everything in here, maybe I'll just circle it quick. If you're a visual person, you can go ahead and just, you might want this. Now, I use that term a little bit openly, because you need to learn all ways. But if you prefer to describe things visually, you can just write that. If you're more of like, I would like to just write this all out, I didn't necessarily mean to go around this, then you can write this and this for your answer on beta blockers. So I think I started to say this. You can use this one on the test. I think it's hard to memorize that understanding. It's a lot easier to memorize. It's a lot easier to memorize if you understand what's going on rather than just memorizing words. It counts as one drug because I, I think just me describing it out means there should be, uh, there should be not a penalty, but there should, should be some offset. But it does cover your requirement that you have an inotropic drug because there's an inotropic effect here and a chronotropic drug. And you'll see when we do, we're going to lecture a little bit in lab tomorrow, unfortunately, we're going to do the cardiac output charts. And you'll see that a lot of drugs, they work by decreasing blood pressure, which decreases something called afterload. And so things like blood thinners, antihyperlipidemics, vaso, uh, an, uh, ACE inhibitors, things like that, they all decrease afterload, and that's how those drugs work. And once those click in your head how those drugs work, you'll realize those are really easy. These are the hard ones. So if you have beta blockers down, as we have it on the board, then the rest of the drugs get to be afterload drugs, which are, like I said, relatively simple.